An array is a data structure that contains other variables and it can be accessed using the index. And in today's video, we are going to look at single dimension arrays and a multiple dimension arrays. And we'll define an array and be able to access the values or the elements of an array. <laughs> Um, I have defined a values table that contains a code, a description, and a value. The code is an integer which is auto-incremented, and then a description, and then a value for the decimal part. And I do have a customer record and then a customer account defined an iterator, which is an integer, a j, and a values table, which is referencing this particular values table. What we'd like to do here is, first of all, um, this page that we are in, it's on the on open page of the values table, and it is the startup page ID. The code, it contains the code description and the value as well. Uh, okay, so one thing I'd like to do is start with the single dimension array. And when you're defining an array, you, of course, have a variable name. So this array will be an array of customers. And it's an array, and this is the point where we define the dimension. If we only have one, let's say 100, of a record of customers, What we do here after defining this particular array is we can be able to append or uh, add elements into this array and access using the index. So I do have a customer defined. The first thing that I'll do here is basically be able to, I don't even need to reset, I just want to uh, specify that if the customer, I want to repeat until the customer dot next is zero. And at this point, I'll just say the array of customer with the customer count appended. It will contain the customer account and then uh, it will just uh, have the customer record. So this is an array of records. Such such a beauty is this can be used to um, maybe in a scenario where you'd like to get uh, the fifth customer, maybe the eighth customer. There are those scenarios where you find um, maybe the users or the customers, the clients request, they'd like to run a loyalty program. If some particular number of customers meet a certain criteria, then uh, randomly select whichever number. Maybe they run a raffle somewhere, online raffle, and one random customer is selected. And then this particular customer will be given a reward based on maybe how fast they paid and all that. So if you have maybe over 500 customers, out of those 500 customers, it's easy to store them in an array of, of such a sort. And then uh, and then once you get, uh, if they select customer number 400, then uh, if the number, raffle number is 400, then you just append that. And you'll, you'll be able to easily get whichever raffle you'd want. Yeah, in the scenario when you want it dynamic. Maybe if it's, so, it's stored in a table, it's still okay, but in a scenario where you would like it dynamic, that could be a use case that I've thought of. And uh, yeah, that's what we can be able to use for. And it contains a maximum of a million. So if I try to go here, you'll definitely get a swig squiggly red line to show that there's an error. And when we go back to a million, then it's okay. And if I am, let me go to, before I go to multi-dimension array, let's access element number what? Array of customers, uh, element number 10, for instance, for the customer, and message it out. The format of this element. A 
I'd like to delete this values table. Anything that is contained in the values table should be clean because this is the first page that is displayed because we'll be appending it in a few and then this is just a code. We don't need it visible. I'll build and run. So we have appended all customers and we'd like to access customer number 10. Uh, okay, this won't really help. Uh, but it will help because let's see, let's see, let's see what it gives us. We could have maybe the name of the customer, that's better. Okay, so this is the detail of this customer because it's stored in an array. Every detail of the customer, the, the customer number, the name, and all the details has been now captured in this particular array. So the next thing now is to go to a multi-dimension array as long as you have more than one dimension here because this is the first dimension. If you go to the second dimension, you go to a multi-dimension array. And uh, the maximum uh, dimension is uh, 10. Will be, let me define an array of decimal and try and go beyond 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 10, and then 11, maybe. Uh, it's an array of decimal. We already are getting an error because uh, the maximum number of array elements is 1 million. The actual number here is this particular value. Uh, I think some 3 million here. The maximum number of array dimension is 10. So we are getting two errors. One is um, the array dimension should not exceed 10. And the second error is that the maximum array elements is uh, 1 million and ours is more than a million. What it means, th th it's, it's a million because all the array, the possible values of an array is usually a multiplication of all these values that are contained here. They had to restrict because of memory. Okay. So if I have such a value, then it's a little bit reasonable. And if you multiply all these, then you get you you get um, something that is less than a million. And if I add a zero here, this one is considered as an empty array. So you see, it's even getting an error. It must be a positive number. Because if you multiply any number multiplied by zero becomes zero. So it doesn't make sense to have a zero. And uh, we can have as many dimensions as possible. Uh, today, in our um, array of values, we'll only have an array that will contain, uh, let's say, 5 by 9. And uh, it will be of decimal. This is the value that we'll be having. So we have defined an iterator for i and for j. In this case here, what we'd like to do is basically assign values to the indes indices of uh, these multiple dimensions, starting with the pattern will basically be 0, 0. No, it will be 1, 1, and then 1, 2, until uh, I think 1. And then 9, should be 1, 9. And then it will go to uh, up to now 5, 5, 1. And the, the total number will be 45. OK, we'll see. We'll display the values, and we'll see how they have been displayed. So for i is equals to uh, 5, OK, it should be 1, 2, 5, do. And then for j is equals to 1, 2, 9, do, uh, begin. This is the syntax for uh, the for loop that will be will use to assign values to the array. So I'll say that my array of values will be i, j, so it's i by j, row, column, I believe. So i by j will now contain, let me just use the product as the value. 
that the, the assigned value for this particular array. So the product is i times j. So once I've assigned all these values, I'd like now to insert the values in this particular values table again. And the code is, of course, an integer which contains some value, random value here. And then we'll have a unique description where we'll want to say that this is element what? Element that, and then in between this element, we'd like to sp uh, actually specify uh, the value in this format. So format i, and then again another plus here with uh, this uh, full column, and then we'll still have a format getting lost here. Plus format j, and then the plus is the one that is going in the wrong place. So we are having the element format i, and then this should be comma, format j. Then the values table dot now, mm, the value will be now the array of values. We have just assigned the value to the index, and we just need to access that particular same value from the index that we have just assigned. And the value is a decimal, and this is an array of decimal. And then we will insert and uh, we expect 45 to be the number so we will confirm that the count of the values table is uh what it, sh it should be uh the values table dot count and it should be 45 to confirm that we have iterated through all the elements of the array and i should say this is a format that it got detected and uh, i think that's it now we can test this multi-dimension array i'll build and run what do we have what have we done? Uh, of course, we still have our customer being displayed. Oh, we didn't display the customer. And we clearly get that the count is 45. That is 5 times 9. And uh, here we do have now the values in element 1, 1, element 2, 2, all displayed sequentially. Uh, in the order in which we have started, I said we'll start with 1, 1, up to 1, 9, and then 2, 1, up to 2, 9, then 3, 1, up to 3, 9, and all up, up to all the way up to 5, 9, because we are having a 5 by 9 array, and it has stored the values in this format. And this is a very good way of displaying and visualizing how the multi-dimension array will be displayed. If we had three dimensions, we could add another loop there but the maximum is 10 dimensions and uh, if possible if you find a use case that is uh, uh, needs an array in your coding then you can be able to use it in this way and this is how we can be able to use arrays in business central i will see you in the next video and may god bless you if you enjoyed this video make sure to like subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss the next one.